fear and anxiety about a new disease, COVID-19, and what could happen can be overwhelming and cause strong emotions in adults and children. Public health actions, such as social distancing, can make people feel isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. I am Kanaram Gume, NBS TV's Chief Coronavirus Correspondent, and this is the CoronaCast podcast, where we'll make sense of the headlines around COVID-19, speak to the experts, and give you all the information you need to stay safe and healthy. When it comes to life during the pandemic, what many people haven't thought about most is mental health. Mental health repercussions regarding what is happening during the pandemic for the people today and beyond will really be a big problem in general, science experts have said. In general, stress behavior for many, many people brings a lot of problems. But how can you deal with this? And how are Ugandans coping with the situation? When you're stressed, it's a set of psychological, physical, and cognitive impairment because of what is placed upon you and your ability to actually deliver. Dr. Benedict Akimana, a psychiatrist and a mental health advocate, has spent time during the pandemic not only treating patients of mental health illnesses, but also using his YouTube channel to create mental health awarenesses. We now speak to him. So if you could briefly tell us the impact of the pandemic on people's mental health. At the start, it was scary, like everyone was worried about getting infected. And then people's minds went on being relaxed. But now we're seeing a number of infections, like in a single day yesterday, we recorded about 94 cases in just one day. And I think it is continuing now to start worrying people again. So what would you say is the impact of pandemic on mental health? Well, that's a very interesting question. But what is mental health to begin with? It is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. So if you look at the definition of mental health according to the World Health Organization, okay, how many of us have been affected how many of you are able to realize your potential during this pandemic because of COVID? How are you dealing with the normal stresses of life? COVID-19 seems to be the new normal. How are we dealing with it day by day? Okay. And how many of us are being able to work productively and fruitfully? And at the end of the day, are you able to make a contribution to your community? So, who of you has been affected by Corona? Are you still able to realize your potential? Are you working productively and fruitfully? Are you being able to make a contribution to your community? So that is how Corona has affected us. It has caused a disequilibrium in the community, in the environment, because um, we are trying as much as possible to get used to the new normal. Okay, And um, the state of Corona re uh, requires that its prevention you have to social distance, you have to put on your mask, you have to stay home. This promotes isolation, okay? So this cuts off your social well-being, your social interaction. All this has been affected by corona. And, I mean, normally, during a stressful situation and stress where you as an individual are unable to balance your requirements, what the community is expected of you and your ability to actually produce... Um, what's expected of you. So we have been stressed. Stress is one of the commonest things that has been set up mm. that has come due to corona. And accumulated stress, because when you're stressed, it's a set of psychological, physical, and cognitive impairment because of what is placed upon you and your ability to actually deliver. So accumulated stress has led to people being very anxious. Just like you've said, I mean, at the beginning, people were scared uh, and they were doing all these things that they were required to do and people are not dying. Now, we had 94 um, infections yesterday. Anxiety has shot up, okay? So people are living in a state where they are not, uh, they're so, so afraid, they're not sure of what is happening next and this has affected their well-being. Accumulated stress has led to people 
being depressed quite a number of people it's so sad that one person actually took his life about two days ago it was very very sad that accumulated stress leads to depression which leads to people uh, feeling they're worthless taking their lives so on and so forth so yes COVID-19 has really, really affected our psychological well-being because of disequilibrium. Stress has come in, depression has come in. Other people have ended up using substances because quite a number of us think that, I mean, to cope with whatever is happening, you have to go and have a drink. So people have resorted to abusing substances because they're not able to actually cope with what's going on. So all this has affected their mental well-being. Okay, so in, in the beginning, um, you know, we were all worried that the COVID-19 might lead to a mental health pandemic. But would you say that Ugandans have managed this quite well? Or uh, maybe we are not sure of the data and the statistics of those that have suffered the mental health. Um, you know, in consideration that those, there are those that suffer from mental health issues, but then are never recorded or never go to hospital, so they're never recorded cases. So what would you say is the state of mental health in Uganda? Have we managed it well during this pandemic? So, well, um, personally, I will say that uh, the numbers of people with psychosocial distress has risen. The people I'm seeing in the clinic has risen. Quite a number of people are not sure of what is happening next. Quite a number of people have lost their income, they've lost their jobs, and this has really, really affected them. The nature of the pandemic uh, requires that people self-isolate. Um, there's been lockdown, there's been quarantine. All this has affected individuals. Imagine quite a number of people used to get treatment and care in the period where there was a lockdown and not able to actually come and access the medication. So um, quite a number of people have actually been affected. And um, well, I may not have the numbers of it, but I'll for sure I'll say that I've started seeing more numbers right now because of the pandemic. You have those who have already been having the mental illness and quite a number of have really, really not been able to actually deal with the stress. Quite a number of my clients come in and I mean, they're saying, I cannot sleep, uh, my appetite has been affected. And, and you've asked them, when did this start? They said, oh, this actually started in March when this happened. So quite a number of people have actually faced psychological disorders. Just that our nature is we don't want to talk about what we're going through. But those who have been able to actually realize and come through, we've been able to help them. So the other factors that have led to, you know, a breakdown of our mental health in Uganda is... You know, one, that there are our loved ones who have been locked up inside other countries, or rather outside the country, and they are unable to return until, you know, lately when the Ministry of Foreign Affairs started repatriating them. But then it had been a long time. And then the other is really loss of income, uh, that our pockets had gone dry because of uh, the, the, the loss of jobs. People had uh, lost their jobs. They had uh, been discontinued from working because they were not essential services right um d d do you think that we are now recovering from that well um yes and no um quite a number some people have been able to actually return to work but you may not say that their income is as it used to be quite a number of companies have actually cut the income of the employees so um it's a good sign that a kind of normal is returning Okay, but it's 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 going to take us a bit of time because Corona is a new normal. We are going to have to adjust to live with it. Um, we are going to I always tell people the serenity prayer. We're going to look at things. We worry about things that we actually can change at the moment. And what is it that you can change now is to take care of your, of your health. You social distance. You put on your mask and you sanitize. And the human mind is very resilient. This is not the first time we're going through this. Uh, they've gone through this before. What we need to remain with is hope, okay, that this shall eventually end. And then, do we know if mental health affects men or women mostly? Is, is there a statistic that proves that? So, different disorders affect the different genders uh, differently. Um, we can say that depression tends to affect... Um, the female gender more than the male gender you can say that substance use uh, the males tend to abuse substances more than the females we can say that um, the males tend to actually complete suicide uh, while the females tend to have more suicide ideations so different genders affect i mean different mental illnesses affect different genders
Okay, and if a victim, how do you deal with the mental health issues? I mean, you deal with a lot of uh, victims in, in the hospital, but how do you make sure that they go through it until they recover, especially if it's not about substance, it's, it's just as a result of the pandemic? So one of the things you need to do is, if you're feeling um, not your normal self, a few things are happening, your sleep has been affected, your appetite, your concentration, the first thing you should do is reach out for help. Who do you reach out for help to? The person closest to you, your neighbor, your friend, okay? And once they reach out to you, please be kind and offer a helping hand. Um, the saying goes, a problem shared is a problem halved. Reach out to someone, talk about what you're going through, and once they reach out to you, please reach out to the mental health professionals. They are all over. In the regional referral hospitals, they are mental health professionals. In the national referral hospital, they are mental health professionals. The private hospitals in and around the towns you're in right now has mental health uh, professionals. Please reach out and we are willing to help. We'll talk through this. We don't want um, you to wait when actually the stress has reached the pathological point where you're ill. Let's talk about how to deal with the stress. Let's talk about how to cope with uh, the stress during this corona. And all those corporate companies out there, um, quite a number have started uh, having these sessions with their employees. It's very, very important that you look out for the mental health of your employees. Let's have these sessions. Let's talk about how to deal with the, uh, the stress of, the, of COVID, how to deal with the stress of having children at home so that we prevent mental illnesses. So we have, you know, um, more than 15 deaths as we speak right now, and one would say that there are more or the bigger problems to deal with. Do you think that mental health should be priority? Yes, yes, yes. It's very, very important. I always tell people, please prioritize your mental health. You know, um, your mind is what fuels you. It's like the engine of your body. It's my mind telling me to answer you this way. It's your mind that told you ask these questions, okay? So imagine... Um, would you allow your phone battery to go low? Do you ever do that? Well, if it does and I do not know, I have to charge it real right. soon. Just like your car fuel, you will never let it go low. So why would you let the engine go low? Okay, and this is your mind. So definitely we need to prioritize your mental health because it is your mind that runs you. It is your mind that tells your body to do everything. It's very, very important that there is no health without mental health. So you recently, in your series of uh, mental health on YouTube, uh, the Mental Health Awareness Month, you did talk about the stigma of mental illness. Uh, if you could explain that and why you think that is a big issue. So um, we seem not to understand mental health, okay? And something that you don't understand, it's met with a lot of um, anxiety and you do not know. Okay, so because we do not understand what mental health, because mental health is a continuum. Actually, your mental health starts before conception, okay, to before you leave this world. But we only think that mental illness is the 1% of the person we see uh, running on the streets, okay, and we seem to look at them as different persons that, you know, they are not worthy of what everyone else is, is having. But I always tell people that you and I have a mind. Okay, so once you have a brain, you are at risk of mental illness. So once you get the mental illness, how would you want to be treated? Okay, just like the greatest rule in the Bible says, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. So now that you know you are at risk of mental illness, how would you want to be treated? So once you answer that question, you will actually start treating people with mental illness with respect. You'll start giving them a safe space for them to actually express how they're feeling you'll start being kind to them and offering them help. Thank you so much, Dr. Benedict. You've been listening to CoronaCast. This podcast is produced in collaboration with the East African Center for Investigative Reporting. Subscribe to this podcast on all podcast platforms. For more information, visit our website, www.voxpopuli.com.